Well, you'll start the meeting with a roll call attendance. I'll just go across my screen. Sharon Parsons? Here. Irene Costello? Here. Brianna Quinn? Here. Denise Barstow Mans? Here. And Courtney Meyer? Here. And I, Diana West, am also here. So tonight we have a very pointed agenda so we can try to talk about very specific things. And um, I know that there have been developments that have been shared, but I want to hold those off until our next meeting so we can really focus in on our two main agenda items. So I'm going to call for a motion to approve the minutes from April 2nd, 2024. So moved. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, roll call vote. Sharon Parsons? Yes. Irene Costello? Yep. Brianna Quinn? Yes. Courtney Meyer? Denise Barstow Mans? Yeah. And I, Diana West, also vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. That should be our last vote. Okay, so first up on the agenda is to talk about the annual town meeting coming up next week. One second, I have to. Excuse me. Uh, so I went through the warrant today and there were a couple things that I think relate to us as the Historical Commission. First being the CPA articles. So they're asking for an extension on the first church items, which are to restore the clock and to fix the steeple. To provide you with some background on both of those things, the clock broke a number of years ago. They researched uh, people to fix it. They found this person in Rhode Island who would fix it. And so they went ahead and applied for CPA funding to do that. And when they went to pull the workings of the clock out of the steeple, they discovered that the steeple is deteriorating. So they then had to sort of pause that project to fix the steeple. And um, so the town approved CPA funding to fix the steeple. They got the steeple jack there. Uh, but the town would not give him a permit because he's not licensed to work in Massachusetts, um, despite the fact that he had already worked in other towns, notably Sunderland. So that has been put on hold and the town has requested an engineer's report. So they're just asking at this point for an extension on the funding they already have. I don't think that will be a problem. Um, most likely someone from the church will get up and speak to what I just shared. Um, but if there is pushback, Anyone can share that information that I just said. Um, what church is this again? The first congregational church, the one right next to the town hall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the next one would be the Phelps Farm, a part of Porter Phelps Huntington House Museum. We wrote a letter in support of getting this funding. Again, I don't foresee people pushing back on this. Um but uh, I'm unfortunately not able to attend the meeting, or if I do get there, it'll be pretty late as I have a uh, work commitment until after six o'clock. And so then it's about a little over an hour and a half for me to drive back. Uh, so I can put together some bullet points if people need to get up and talk about this. It's to just uh, shore up the Phelps farmhouse, which PPH acquired, I think, a couple years ago. And um, it's they're a nonprofit, so it's perfectly within the realm of CPA funding. So um, I'd be surprised if there was pushback because this seems like a perfect candidate for that money. I'm like a little bit worried about it just because the the state of the house is like it's it's pretty bad. Okay. Um, obviously, the the point is to stabilize it so that they can do more work, better work. Um, so I, it will be interesting to see if there is pushback. I hope that there is not. But I think when people see the pictures, like some people might be like, what are we doing? Mm. Which I hope not. I hope not. Because it's a very important project. Okay. So is it, it's a house and a couple other buildings, right? There's like a cluster of four buildings in there? Or am I yeah. something? Okay. Yep. But it's just the house. Is... Oh, no. CPA funding, I believe, isn't it? Just the main house. Thanks. So. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's just the main house for the CPA funding. And there's an L, which is like um, oh, yeah. old, old timey pantry, um, which is very intact. 
um, but it needs a roof over it so that they can, you know, fix it the right way. And then there's some other things that need to be addressed because so that there's like not critters getting in there and humidity so it just doesn't get any worse. So the warrant article states Phelps farmhouse. So I think they are just looking at the farmhouse right now. I think they may have gotten some other funding. And then this is in addition to that. But I'm not entirely sure. Do we know how well, much they're asking for that they're asking for? To see if the town will vote to transfer 50000 from the Community Preservation Act Historic Reserve and 100000 from the Community Preservation Act Undesignated Fund for a total of 150000 Okay. And do they have like a breakdown of costs that they think it's going to be or is that just, is it like a ballpark? I would guess that they have estimates and that's how they arrived at this number. Um, it also says that historic yeah. preservation restriction will be required. Oh, that's good. Um, I can share the their application right now. I'll check your email in a second. Just because you said they might have other funding coming in as well. So I didn't know how big the number actually was that they're looking for. They're doing a lot of different things over there. So the other funding might not be directly for the building, but I know that they're hoping to do like a lot of programming. And I know they're hoping to bring in interns and there's documents they want to digitize. So other funding might not be for the stabilization of the building. It might be towards those other projects. Uh, but I'm going to guess that overall, like this is, this sounds like a, a very, very big project, everything that they want to do. So I think that they've come to the town with a, a reasonable request for some of it, but they know that they will have to go to other grant funding for more of it. So I got a letter from the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation asking that we attend the May 2nd meeting. Um, and in here, it says, the foundation has already spent over a hundred thousand dollars to preserve. I'm sorry, Courtney, I can't quite hear you. You're going oh, in and out. Okay. Um, so I got a letter from the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation um asking us to attend the meeting on May 2nd. Um, and they've already put over a hundred thousand dollars uh to preserve the building. Um, and actively applying for critical additional grant funding for this long, large long-term project. I will be out of town next week. So I mm -hmm. usually am at town meeting like 99.9% .9 of the time, but. I'm also supposed to be out of town, but um, this is next Thursday. Yes. Denise, I you had mentioned that you might be able to get up and speak to warrant articles if necessary. Who? Denise. Oh, good. <laughs> Courtney, are you going to the meeting? Uh, yeah, I'm hoping to, to go. Um, public speaking is like one of my worst fears, but I could do it if I need to. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's weird when you do it as a job. But then when you do it as a person, it's a really different thing. I don't know why. Because gotcha. it's my personal life versus like a job. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am going to do my best to go. Of course, it depends on the kids, but I will try to be there. I can provide bullet points um, that you can bring up and share. Great. I still feel like I was on board with, with doing it, though. I think when we talked the other day, she was, but... Um, until she speaks for herself. I still feel like I'm I'll leave it more, open. So I feel like I'm, you know, not the best like, spokesperson in that realm, but I'm I like I'm playing catch up still a little bit. So I don't want to I don't okay. want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> <Town meeting. laughs> yeah, I can speak. Apparently I can only unmute myself with the space bar if I'm on the screen. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. All right. So the last CPA article that relates to us is that they're asking for money for town hall, 
which I also wrote a letter in support of. And this is $40,000 to hire an architect to prepare a design and construction budget for rehabilitation and restoration work on the exterior of the town hall. Again, I can provide bullet points for this. Uh, something I learned in my quick research was that Hadley's Town Hall is one of the very few that um, is an original town hall that is still used as a town hall in Massachusetts. That's which cool. I found interesting. It's the original town hall. We didn't have one prior to when it was built at the end of the 1830s. Um, and so it was renovated, I think 1902 was the first date was when they added the second floor and then they um, changed some of the windows out in the 1960s. So I don't think any major projects have been done since the 1960s. I know that they've been working on restoring the columns. So uh, it's was, past due. Uh, I knew I knew about the columns because we saw that being done. But um, so this is an adi funding in addition to what they've already done. I assume yes. that, I mean, they found more problems with it as they went on is that kind of how yep. the ball seems to always roll I feel like you start mm -hmm. something and it opens a whole nother can of worms yes do we know what the projects are that they're trying to do so far um right now this is to hire um what does it say an architect to do a design to figure out the construction budget for the rehabilitation okay. um oh, yeah. I feel like, as though DPW director did tell me a couple things, but I'm trying to remember. Windows, siding, and concrete repairs. Um, that all makes sense. I feel like those are always the things that go, <laughs> the windows and the siding. It's like so hard with weather to keep up with that stuff. Um, but what, so what, do we know what the budget is? Uh, right now, they're asking for forty thousand to do to oh, hire the architect. Wow. Okay. So most likely down the road, they will ask for more. Excuse me. I did forward on a grant opportunity to the town that was um, through the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and I don't know if they applied. The first step of the application was due April twelfth. Um. But it seems like I thought we were a good candidate for that. And I think those were grant, those were pretty small grants, I think up to like maybe 150,000. But every little bit counts. Um, and that's for a study or for work? Uh, I'm not sure what exactly they applied for. I'm just going to throw this out there. I mean, $40,000 for the exterior where you can kind of see what needs to be done. <laughs> And I'm sure they're finding some, perhaps some structural things, but doesn't the whole building need to be updated? And I'm sure that's a huge project, but it's our town hall. And yeah, so there's that's... some beautiful, as I understand, um, windows that have been, you know, closed up and, you know, it could really be a magnificent building if, mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do 40,000, you know, what more, how much more would it, cost to do it whole yeah i think that's why this is step one that they have to hire the architect to make the plan mm -hmm. so with everything that happens in the town there's a very specific process that has to be followed like you can't really just go out on a limb and do stuff on your own like you have to follow a process that goes through many different people so that's what we're doing here is that they need to be able to hire an architect to come up with that construction plan that's step one we get the funding for that. And then that architect will tell us, all right, these are all the things you have to fix. And this is the estimated cost. So I'm sure that probably a year from now, we'll be hearing again from Town Hall and DPW about the possibility of more CPA funding to be able to restore the Town Hall. Well, it's a it's a focal point of the town. It goes, you know, so it's just, it, it's really something that we should um, be proud of. And, and, and it's no longer big enough. Mm -hmm. That's another issue. I mean, there's no storage space left. Mm -hmm. There's stuff stored in the hallways. Well, there are a lot of storage facilities going up around town, so. <laughs> um, yeah, 
pretty ugly ones too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I know that they have also been looking into using the Goodwin building as expansion in terms of storage and possibility of offices. Uh, I don't know where they are in that process, uh, but I think right now the goal is just to get the funding to be able to do the study. So we know what we're working with and we know what our next steps are. Okay. And I would agree that it it is a focal point of the town and we should restore it. Okay, so the last thing on the warrant that I noticed that could affect us is there's a very long uh, bylaw at the end about solar arrays. So I went through and skimmed this and first thing under purpose, it does say to um, the solar array has to minimize impacts on scenic, natural and historic resources of the town. That is the only time the whole thing, the historic is mentioned. And um, I'll just say that I'm fully in support of renewable energy, but I do wish that someone had approached us as the historic commission about this before it got this far in the process. So if anyone's willing to do this on town meeting floor, I think we should offer the following amendment. If a permit is pulled for a site listed on the Massachusetts Cultural Resources Inventory System, MACRIS, the Historical Commission will be consulted before final approval is given. The Historical Commission has the right to deny the permit if it will negatively impact the historic landscape of the area. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Someone has to be brave enough to get up and do this. Okay, I have an idea. What if we... Um email that language to Mr. Buildwire, ask for his feedback, let him know our intentions, and maybe that's something that they would like to make their own amendment. Just a thought. I'm writing that down. Yeah, the, the solar array thing is, um, a confusing one because one would think that you could put solar like and you know of course i'm not a structural engineer i don't know but it's irritating because like in california what they do is they put it on the tops of all the roofs and i don't understand we have all those malls you can't put a whole bunch of solar on top of the malls and stop putting it in all the fields like there has to be a better way parking garages they put it everywhere in california mm -hmm. all the roofs of everything and then it doesn't take up any extra space so with all the commercial buildings we have, you think you could just like strap Home Depot with a bunch of solar and <laughs> be done with it. So yeah, unfortunately they didn't build the building with that in mind with the weight of it. That's yeah, I'm sure. Heard. Sure. The, there's a structural problem. Otherwise they probably would have considered it, but still I feel like there, I don't know. I feel like there are better places to put it. And cause I know in other areas around here, they're considering cutting down like 40 acres of forest in the hill towns to put huge solar arrays there. And it's, you know, renewable en energy is great, but not at the cost of like a million trees. So question, I, I, how many solar arrays are there in Hadley? Cause I've seen a few, but I'm kind of at a loss to know exactly where they are. Um, and are there more planned? So, what's up? Huntington Road, Mill Valley Road are two of the bigger ones. Yeah. And there's some between Middle Street and West Street. Um, I, I mean, is this a, um, a bylaw to expand the solar arrays or what's, it, what's the purpose of it? If they're already there. I would imagine okay. they'd be grandfathered if they're already in place. So it's for new okay. solar panels. So okay. I think I've actually misunderstood this completely. So I thought we were proposing this whole bylaw, but what they're actually proposing is an amendment to the bylaw about battery storage. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think that my plan is moot at this point and we would need to bring it to the planning board separately. And then that would be, have to be a whole other amendment to this bylaw. Okay. 
I thought this was a brand new bylaw, but no, they are amending the existing one that was passed in 2012. Talking about where that they can put the batteries. Add the following definitions. Energy storage. Why don't I just share my screen? How about that idea, huh? All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yep. So this is what they are adding, but then they included the existing language of the bylaw down here. Well, it's definitely a bunch of lawyer jargon, so I don't really understand what I'm reading. Yeah, what is it saying? Yeah. yeah, I think it's uh, to cover themselves in terms of... Um, like what that actually means, what a solar yeah. system is, and what it encompasses. Yes. Yeah. And I think probably what's happening is, like, part of the reason for solar is that you take in more energy that then you can use and so you would sell it back to the grid but right. then this is offering and another option which would be that you can store it yourself to use in the future like if there's a rainy day or like, like an extended period of time of cloudiness or something yeah. that's, that's, that's what's happening in, in 2012 there were not storage batteries for solar panels now there are, they're very expensive, but people are buying them because when there's a power outage, you then rely on your, your stored battery for oh. your electricity. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is for, for any, um, any residential or small commercial. These have nothing to right. do with those just really, fields that yeah. are out there. This is just for like, if I wanted to put a battery, if I had solar panels on my house, I could install a battery somewhere. Oh, there's no okay. reason why they, these big ones can't either, but I think this is more for the household ones that Got now it. that these batteries are finally available. Yeah, I, I, we have we have solar panels. So Got do it. we. So do we. So this is interesting. That I was figuring it was for commercial, but this is interesting if it's for residential. Yeah. So then, yeah, it doesn't apply to it. But I then I guess I guess Sharon, the point would be then, right? It would be if you owned a historic home, then what? is the situation with putting a giant battery on the side or in the garage or whatever, right? Isn't that? Yeah. And also, I don't think a lot of those homes have solar on the roofs anyway, so. I wouldn't put solar on the roof of a historic home, for sure. <laughs> they may not even withstand the solar panels. To exactly. Be yeah, so I think this is a bigger conversation that needs to happen outside of town meeting now that I've read that more closely sorry for yeah. jumping the gun on that um because I think there should be more language in there about historic resources and consulting with the historical commission um because I reading through that I liked that there was language in terms of like along route 47 because it's a scenic byway you have to like have it further away from the road but um I know that like Last year, sometime, flavors of Cook Farm approached us about putting a solar array near their farm because they are on the Macris um, listing. And so that was really nice that they approached us about that at the time we said we were fine with that because ultimately we currently do not have any jurisdiction to say no. So it would be nice um, because there is the potential that this could greatly impact the historic landscape of the town, um, especially like if somebody along West street was like, Oh, I want to like take over my entire yard with solar panels. It's like, love the energy on, but that's going to be hideous and will ruin the historic landscape. So no. Yeah, isn't there a sign on West street right now, or maybe it's one of the other, something right near there though, um, where they're saying like rent this land or use this land for a solar array. And it's I thought it was one of the houses on West street or one of the lots maybe. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that, Courtney. Yeah, it's um it's between West Street and Middle Street, so I think it's a Middle Street address. Is that right, Irene? 
Well, I know there there are already solar panels back there, but yeah. between West and Middle, but um, I don't no, I haven't seen that sign to see that it, to somebody wants to put more up. Yeah, there's a little sign. It's next to one of the farms. It says like, here's a free lot. Please rent, like buy this or use this as solar land or open. Oh, for gotcha. I'm not sure about that one. <clears throat> so well all of that 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 land out there we i mean just check the zoning map that's residential so um does where do solar panels or arrays fit in that so um it's zoned residential agricultural mm -hmm. and so reading through that bylaw you can put up solar arrays in residential agricultural so then underlining what you just said diana i definitely think there should be yeah. Amend that by law in terms of historical preservation because if they put like a giant solar field right there that would not i every time i pass that sign i'm like mm, is that what we want right there i don't know it doesn't mm. seem like it looking on google maps i can see what you're talking about it's interesting it's like one straight line so i'm guessing like the property line isn't very wide yeah i think it's one of those long skinny lots yeah mm -hmm. All right, like so lot. we'll put that on a future agenda to talk about more in depth and determine our next steps. As far as the battery storage, though, that's we, we don't have any. Yeah. That. Okay. I mean, if you're thoroughly against it, you can get up and say something. But in terms of yeah. how the law is written right now, I don't think we have any real jurisdiction to oppose it. Those weren't large batteries. It was only 150 kilowatt and under, and then 150 kilowatt and over. Those aren't going to be a huge battery. No, it's going to be like a generator. Yeah. So it would be, say, like, you know, those, like, air conditioning units people have outside their houses, like, the same size as that? Yeah. yeah, they're pretty small. I would say they're slightly larger than that, but they're, they're not that big. They're pretty small yeah. batteries. Yeah. You might not want, yeah. I mean, you hopefully people would put them in the back of their house or on the side anyway and not have it be um, seen by the street, which is one of those historical, you know, uh, does whatever um, stipulations. But, but now, now the water commission makes you put your water meter on the front of the house. Yeah. And oh, a lot of people have put those, uh, what are those, the split systems? Many and yeah, you know, they all have generators that are you know you can see from the streets, so it's happening. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's all I had for town meeting. Uh, did anybody else have any questions or comments about town meeting? I wish I could go. All right, so next up, I just want to take the next like half hour or so to discuss the presentation we had by Chris Skelly back on March 19th. So uh, I just leave it for an open discussion. What are people thinking? Uh, did we think it was useful? What do we want to be our next steps? Are we ready to jump into this? Yeah. Anybody want to go was, first? It was very, it was very useful. Um, Without a doubt, it explained things to us that I think we were not cl clearly understanding anyway. Um, and it goes back to that letter that we received last year where we were being chastised for not stopping um, work on the on that house at the end of West Street. And and at the time we looked it up and we we have no recourse. We have no power. It all belongs to the select board. So um to follow through on some of what Chris had to say would give us a little more power. Um, I mean, we're just a yes ma'am, no ma'am kind of organization. And if we say no, it really doesn't make a difference. Yeah. I did um, really like the idea of if worst case scenario were to happen to try to do community outreach and make a local historic district for one house if it was like a worst case scenario type of thing i thought that was really interesting that many people have done that in order to save one building um 
I don't know how that would go here. I think it would take a lot of community outreach, but I thought it was like a good emergency backup plan type of move that you can do, which I didn't know about. Didn't you have to have a, a demo bylaw in place before? And then while that was happening, you right. get this historical? Well, yeah, but I, I mean, I guess if you heard like whisperings of something going on, um, you could try to do that before something happened. But yes, obviously, first case scenario would be, or best case scenario would be to have a demo delay by law, which we don't have. Yeah. Well, I, I think his um, fee is entirely reasonable for coming out here and, uh, you know, for what he verbally, um, you know, how he scoped that out. And um, I, I, you know, I think I said the last time that um, we should try to find a way to do it mm -hmm. sooner than later, because if we have to wait until next year, a whole year has gone by. And I also liked uh, both he and um, somebody else uh, was saying, you know, there's a lot we can do um, to do community outreach in the meantime as well. So that kind of breathe new direction and, and, you know, sort of new life into um, some things, you know, to projects going forward after the walking tour and the driving tour are done. And now those two in them the, themselves have been amazing projects and also should um, it'd be great marketing tools and mm -hmm. outreach tools. Yeah. I also like, Oh, and isn't it interesting that like two days after that meeting, they were talking about one idea is the historic plaques that you can buy for your house. And my neighbor was uh, walking and it's like, she mentioned that. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just have these little plaques on the house? Because West Street is so special. I, I can't believe you just said that. We were just talking about that the other day. <laughs> yeah, I so, thought that was a great idea also. So someone seemed to think that the existing ones were a past project of the historic commission i had no knowledge of that um they look very old <laughs> so it yes. might have a very long past project yeah and you can tell um some of them were probably just put up because people were inspired to put the date of the homes you know and probably spray painted it or something and others have really nice looking plaques that um you know, they probably acquired. And um, I think it's nice that people cared enough if they didn't have the nice plaque because it wasn't at that time probably like my house. Um, maybe not considered historical enough to get the plaque because it wasn't, it was built in 1896. But, um, you know, people cared at one point to do it, so... Yeah, I mean, I think, I think if we figured out how to do it and we made a template for what they should look like to have them all be the same and then Chris's idea of somebody actually paying a, a small fee to have mm -hmm. them made, I mm -hmm. think that's a really great idea. I really, mm -hmm. really like that a lot. And I think the, a lot of people would like doing it. It would be a really cool thing, especially if we made announcement of, announcements about it, like in the paper or whatever, public announcements about it. I think people would be really into it because they're really cool. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, even driving around as a resident i feel like every single time i'm driving i look at those signs being like oh and that one was built in 1771 like they're so yeah. cool now i mean uh, you know the probably the ponderance of them are on west street but there must be other areas throughout the town um yeah, where they stand out as being much, right yeah uh -huh. so it'd be cool if those areas did have them too so it wasn't just west street i think that's a really good idea too to have them try to have them on every historic home I think that would build build more of a sense of historic community too if if mm -hmm. people in all different areas had them and not just on west street that way everyone would know yeah. if my home is yep. special too all right this is hadley um and then there also i think i had um shared this with a couple people um that the mass historical commission has been having these um webinars and the third one that i'm attending um, is this Friday morning and it's on developing a historic preservation plan. So I'll send that to anybody if you can attend. It's at yeah, 10 o'clock. Do. I don't have the link yet, but I'll probably get it in a day or two. And um, 
that's a good start. They're, um, you know, they're nice presentations, maybe a little dry, but, um, you know, there's good information in there. And they've already had one on a, I think they had one on a demo delay and then what is historic preservation. So it was very, it was a good um, intro for me. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with I agree with Irene that the um his his fee seems really reasonable. So I guess what are next steps for us to try to get that money from the CPA fund for him to come out for a day? So the next round of CPA applications, the application is due August first, and then the town would vote at the October meeting. Hmm. So that's usually like the last Thursday in October. Um, so it's, it's very, it's like less than a thousand dollars. Right. So I don't yeah, foresee 950, the 750 to 950. I think he said it was like really not that bad. Um, I would be surprised if the town turned it down. So, I mean, I think we could potentially plan for getting together with him in say November, if we think that that is something we could get on our calendars. Um, I mean, I hear what Irene is saying. We don't want to kick this can too far down the road, but we also just have to work within timelines we don't have control over. Yeah, so in terms of actually filing that application, um, I feel like it'd be a pretty simple ask. So, like, I'm happy to write that up for the right. CPA application. You said it's okay. August 1st? Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I can send it to people to look it over and make sure the language is correct. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is to talk about future meeting dates. So um, I think if you potentially could have that ready, if we meet at the end of June, then um, we can review it at that time. Sure. Um, I was going to suggest that we don't meet in July as people are usually traveling and it might be difficult to get people together. Um so if that timeline works for you, Brianna. Sure, yeah. And was there a possibility that we were going to meet in person uh, after people did the doodle poll? Was that for the June meeting or was that for... The so... Um, <laughs> I've done it like that, a week ago. I already forget. I, I appreciate you, Brianna, yes, for yeah. dealing with our doodle polls. Um, mm -hmm. So what happened was that there are two dates where six people can come, but not all seven of us. So... Um, that is a conversation I was going to have with those two people who potentially can't come to one of the dates. Um, and that meeting, I would no, I don't want that to be a regular business meeting. I want that to just be sort of an open discussion meeting um, that people can, it's open to the general public, of course, if they want to step by and ask us questions. Um, but I don't want us to be um, with a specific agenda in mind. I think that's just a time for us to get to know each other better. And then we could have an hour long regular Zoom meeting on a Tuesday evening where we focus more on our business items. So were they two dates in June? Yes, I can pull up the doodle Was poll. it June 9th or June 23rd? Hold on. So June 2nd was a possibility, but Sherry couldn't come. And then um, June 8th was a possibility, but Courtney couldn't come. What day is June 8th? That's a Friday, isn't it? Sunday. It's a Saturday. Oh, June 9th uh, is a Sunday. 8th? Okay. I won't be offended if you guys meet without me. No, I can't yeah. do the June 8th either. I, I think I said um, I was away that weekend. You checked it off, Irene. I did for the June 8th. <laughs> is it a Saturday or a Sunday? It's a Saturday. I'll but be there. June 9th was also possible, looks like. June 9th on a Sunday. I could get back on a Sunday Okay, if that works for everybody. Well, do we Courtney, want... are you away for the whole weekend? 
Uh, well, the ninth is my birthday, and it's also my kids' dance recital. So, and I think I'll be chaperoning. So, um, those are both legitimate excuses. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we could do it this one time, and unfortunately, Courtney couldn't come. But then we could schedule a second one where hopefully we might be able to get us all there. How are people That's feeling about perfectly that? Fine. Okay. Yeah, I can make most weekends work unless we're traveling and around my kids' ridiculously busy <laughs> recreational activity schedule. Oh my God. So is June 9th? Does June 9th work for everybody else? That's I a Sunday? So. Yeah, I think so. Could we do it in the afternoon? Yeah, so I had on here, um, Sherry, you were a maybe, I think. So I had any time between um, like, Starting at 12.30 for like a two-hour window until four o'clock. I think the reason I was a maybe is because I've scheduled our next quarterly church meeting for June 9th. Ah. So, uh, because the next Sunday is Father's Day. Mm -hmm. and But I, that's still tentative. I have to get it worked out with everybody. Yeah, but we're usually done with those by noon, right? Because we're not going to do a lunch. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. if we... Yeah. Yeah, I so can do a... one to three or what are we? Yeah. Doing? Could okay. we do two to four? We yeah. Okay. That's fine. Uh Denise, do you think Barsas will be okay with hosting us? Yes, indeed. What did we just decide on for the time two? Yes. That's an amazing time. Okay, great. <laughs> On the ninth, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's great. All right. So oh, back Courtney. to um, Chris. So we're thinking Brianna's gonna do the CPA application for us to get funding to do the um, local historic preservation plan. Uh, do we want to focus on that before we try to tackle a demolition delay bylaw? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I think like in terms of next steps for the demo delay bylaw, I agree with Irene that having him come and do just kind of the preservation plan summary and cataloging, going around and cataloging what we have and going through all the assets in the town is very valuable information for us to know kind of the direction that we're heading. But are there any things that we can start working on for the demo delay bylaw, like community outreach or anything that we can kind of do to get the ball rolling before we do those things? Is there anything else? Cause I don't, I, I mean, I don't really know the steps that we would have to take to actually try to put that into place or what we would have to write up um, or whatever presentation we would have. So I agree with Irene that like, we would probably need the information first in terms to like really make mm -hmm. a thorough um, presentation, but but is there anything we can do in the meantime? I think we could um, adopt that presentation that Amherst put together and change it up to be Hadley focused, obviously. I think that's a good first step because I think it really outlines what a demolition delay bylaw is. And I think that's something that people need to be aware of. Uh, I think it's really important for people to know that the point of it is to uh, ha have a conversation about other choices before a historic resource is destroyed. And that we aren't trying to tell people what to do, but we want to work with them for the good of everyone some flowery language like that really make it obvious that like this isn't us telling you what to do with your personal property your private property because i think that's gonna be a major pushback that this is america and i own this property and i can do whatever i want with it um because i think from what i've seen is that people in town do care about our historic resources and they do care about keeping hadley the beautiful place that it is. It just comes down to that sort of like pushback of that feeling of like, 
don't tell me what to do. So we really have to shape that in a way where um, they realize that we are on their side and not working against them, but working with them. I like what you said for the good of everyone, because at some point, if you destroy too much of a town's landscape, then people don't want to live there anymore. It's not the same place. But obviously, positive. (laughs) Don't destroy the town. (laughs) Don't trash our town, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, So what would, so we've got this, um, the application for CPA funds in August, and then it will come to town meeting next October. What's the timeline for trying to get a demo bylaw um, in place? And do we want to present both of them to the town at the same time if it's October? I don't think we are ready at this point to okay. bring a, a total bylaw to town meeting floor in October. I think... Um, we are at least a year, if not a year and a half out from that possibility, because I think we need to approach the planning board Mm -hmm. and we need to approach the select board about this. And I guess there is a bylaws subcommittee, Mm -hmm. so we need to approach them as well. And I think really before we do any of that, we need to have a very strong plan in place for why this is so important for our Mm -hmm. town. Good. Okay. Well, that's, I'm glad you said that because one then leads to the other right yeah i think i mean what what you said about having the chris's um day with us it's just going to be hugely helpful because then we will all be on the same page we'll know exactly what we need to say i think picking his brain especially about specific resources in hadley when he does the tour with us and drives all around and sees everything he may be able to highlight the things that maybe we don't see as being super important he might have a better sense of like what we could include in that presentation that would hopefully get people onto our side um so yeah i think having that presentation first would just give us a really good sort of like base to go off of in terms of how we want to write the demo delay by law mm-hmm. or present it anyway i think the writing it will probably be, be the easiest because we can I'll be just copy and paste from someone else yeah. and just yeah his his bylaw he's the one that wrote the, the yeah. demo bylaw it's the um the outreach and not yeah. just the overall town it's getting through those boards that I mentioned because they can put the kibosh on it at any time um I think there probably is recourse for like getting a bylaw on town meeting floor we probably have to get signatures and all that jazz we'd have to look it up but like you want planning board and select board to be on your side because especially because the planning board is most likely the one who will be enforcing this Mm -hmm. along with the building commissioner's office Mm -hmm. so um we don't want to go rogue at -hmm. this point Mm -hmm. um it we don't have i shouldn't say that it's we don't necessarily have anything that is on the chopping block right this second. Like I don't, there isn't an imminent danger to say tearing down the oldest town in Hadley. Um, there isn't an imminent danger to tearing down Russell school um, because tearing down Russell school also costs millions of dollars. So um, okay. if we were in that situation, this would be a different recourse we would be taking, but I think we can go through all those right channels that I mentioned and uh hopefully we can do this great outreach and get people on our side and this won't be a major fight it's also diana and i had talked about to um the turnover of some seats on the select board coming up so that will be kind of a different conversation once we know who's on the select board um in a few weeks so uh when we meet in june Maybe that's something we can talk about there is kind of like a general community outreach and what we want to do. And if there are people that we specifically know that we can talk to, or I don't know, just kind of get like put feelers out there for what people think about this. And um, someone had mentioned to me too recently that I think it was May is like historic preservation month or something like that. I looked it up and I didn't find anything, but they were like, oh, did you know that May is like a really great time to do community outreach because it's some kind of preservation month or his like 
local historic month or something, but I couldn't find anything about it. So I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I don't know what we would do other than maybe something to think about would be like lawn signs or putting a piece in the paper or something like that. I'm not sure what exactly we could do that would be like something obvious like that. But I mean, I noticed those lawn signs. So maybe that's something we could do is print up a bunch of lawn signs about, I don't know. I don't know what it would say, but something about um, the historical commission or what we're trying to do or whatever. Hmm. May is national is national preservation month. There we go. Um, okay. That is historic preservation month. <clears throat> yeah. So they were like, do stuff in May. So I, I mean, that's right around the corner. So I don't know how quickly we could act on anything like that, but um, I do have a friend who writes for the bulletin. So I could always ask her to put something in there about historic preservation or something. Historic New England has a little blurb that says May is preservation month. Let's make a difference in our communities. So they have some kind of little program up going on out there. Everything seems to be from last year. Mm. I like the signs. Yeah, I feel like mm. I feel like I always notice lawn signs. Like no matter what, I notice lawn signs or just signs mm. anywhere. So I don't know if there'd be a way to print some up that would say what exactly what you just read, Sharon, something like that, that said yeah. something about historic preservation, like join your community and, mm -hmm. and then say like from the historical commission, just to get people even interested in that. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't even pay attention to that kind of thing at all. It's just like not even on their radar. Well, so to get more people interested or knowing that it was a thing that might help us. Okay, well, about signs well, is May is right around the corner, so we've you know this has to be quick. But if we want to do it next month, um, you could probably have a sign made up fairly quickly. And um, how many? And and you know who could? How much would it cost? Do you, any ideas? I'll look into not, it if you want. Yeah, not having done anything like that, no. Sunrise fifteen to twenty. My husband just said Sunray signs is fifteen to twenty dollars per sign. Yeah, somewhere. somewhere in that ballpark. Well, that's more expensive per, than I thought. Per sign. Yeah. I can reach out to Emma Dragon because she just um, got her signs for her husband Kyle, who's running for select board. Um, I imagine um, I can get that information. It was, they did a super simple sign, but still, I've noticed all the select board signs, and like they're everywhere, and I you know, I see, you see them and you pay attention, even if it's subliminal messaging, <laughs> you're still seeing them. It kind mm -hmm. of has like on your radar. So um, yeah, we could, we could say something like the month of May is historical preservation month. And we on the historical commission care about our town or something like, feel free to reach out to us at any time, whatever the wording would be. Um, I can ask Linda, the town treasurer, how much money we have in our budget because that'll turn over July 1st. So I, we should have, I, I shouldn't say that. I think we have maybe one or $200 available. Um, that would get us five signs. Yeah. Put them in just a yeah, place. So one for each of us. <laughs> just, just, just put them in, in, in the, you know, the really key place is someplace on a West street. And <clears throat> yeah, anyone we know that lives on a main road, give them each one side. Oh. <laughs> yeah. At the town hall. At the town hall, yeah. A couple churches. Port of Phelps Huntington. Mm -hmm. I mean, we I, could. I, we I could think that's it's a great way just to unofficially kick off this, you know, public outreach and, um, um, you know, marketing. Like, it's to the point where I just, like, match the $100. Let's get yeah. five more signs. Yeah. Let's <laughs> do it. Like, Can we just do it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what will our signs say? What did Sharon do? What was that quote? <laughs> yeah. It's said, it's right. It just May is dedicated to National Historic Pres National Preservation. Wait, May is dedicated. My phone flipped. May is dedicated to National Preservation Month, also known as Historic Preservation Month. The month celebrates the nation's heritage through historic places. So we could just say something like May is May is historic preservation month. We're celebrating 
um, our heritage through historic places, of historic places or something. Celebrate Historic Preservation Month with us and then be like, the Historical Commission. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but then people will be like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing? I don't happy, think... happy Historic Preservation Month. Yeah, Happy and... Historic Preservation Month. There you go. And just put from the Historical Commission. And then people will be like, we have a Historical Commission? <laughs> How interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess, I guess where we could go with that is if somebody reached out and asked, which they may, we could say that we are in the process of Im implementing the program for new plaques for the historic homes and that that's our like kickoff initiative is the song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I have been looking up different towns that have them and it's done through different organizations. Newton has a program that's done through their historic commission that <clears throat> is a fundraiser for the historic commission. But mm -hmm. so far, excuse me, <clears throat> so far, all the ones I've seen have been wooden ones, but you can obviously there are companies that make the the brass ones, which seem to me more durable in the mm. long run than the ones. So, but I've been kind of flipping through here and, you know, most, most of the places I've seen um, are bigger, more historic communities, Newton, Concord, um, Hudson, New York had one. No, I think a fundraising idea is great if we can mm -hmm. double the cost of the sign or something like that, or even yeah. two thirds or whatever. And then, but, but new and gives when you buy your sign, they, the historic commission also um, helps them to look up the history of their house so that it that's on record too. So it would be work for us if we did it the way Newton has done it. But I think for our June meeting, I'm not going to be here very much at May at all. In fact, from May 1st to June 5th, I'm gone three weeks. So, um, but I can probably print out some of the um, different programs. Sandwich has one. And just to give us an idea of what different communities do for that. Right. That's cool. I like that idea a lot. Um, even if, you know, ours isn't as complex because some of those places, like you were saying, are very historically driven and they're they have a lot more information um but even if ours isn't that in depth just to have some kind of a program and have it be a fundraising program because i think people like having something cool for their house but i think they also like fundraising ideas so if they feel like they're doing some good by buying a sign that could possibly help us also i heard back from dragon um they ordered 50 mm -hmm. of them for 250 dollars, and then they're borrowing the metal sign stands from jane nevin smith that's not bad. Mm -mm. Did they put the date on them? Because that's not a good idea. Because mm -mm. my daughter's signs don't have any date on them, so she can use them every time she runs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kyle just says vote dra uh, vote Kyle Dragon for select board. That's it. So, will you ask her where she had them made? Yeah. <clears throat> we don't necessarily have ready access to the metal frame. So then I wonder what the cost on that would be. Mm -hmm. What would you call that? Metal lawn sign frame? <laughs> metal sign stands. I think. They, they, use, they sell them with the signs. I mean, it's a separate cost, but you can buy them when you buy the signs. Mm hmm yeah, they probably got the signs for cheap because they didn't ask for the frames. Because it looks like the frames with the signs are about twenty dollars, but then you can they get really expensive if you get big ones. Metal lawn sign frame, Home Depot. Oh. Um, okay, that was unhelpful. Hold on. Yard sign frames on Amazon. I could also ask Jane to borrow them from her. Well, the question is, I mean, if the dragons are already using them, the election isn't until I think May 21st. So that just oh, like, true. if we true, want true, these true. up the whole yep. month of May, those just aren't available for us too. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can get like a five pack of them for 10 bucks on Amazon. It looks like that's, or eight pack for 15. I don't know what the, um, We'd have to look at sizing. Dimensions, yeah. 
but 50 signs for 250 bucks and then the lawn signs like, that's not that terrible if we did mm -hmm. like 20 signs let's say mm -hmm. and then bought the frames i feel like that wouldn't be totally out of reach in terms of like i don't know matching funding or something mm -hmm. all right let's make a succinct action plan i'm mm -hmm. going to find out from linda sanderson how much money we have then who is going to design these signs design yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be here that's the issue i won't be able to get them manufactured or so i'm sure we can, can find Hi, some i can i can design the signs on powerpoint no problem if you send me the copy language okay. awesome uh okay so <clears throat> Nisa designed them um Denise, are you also willing to then like work with Sunrays or whoever to get them made? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have a plan for that. And, then and Dragon other... used Dragon used signs on the cheap. All right. Is the name of the company? Sounds about right. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. Okay. So. Um. We're going to do that. I have a, I have a task. Denise has a task. Brianna is going to work on our CPA application for the preservation plan summary with Chris. Um, who wants to do more research on the plaque idea? I will. Great. Thank you, Irene. All right, um, so, you know, actually, um, but Sharon, would you send me the, that what you found on that already? And I'll, yeah, follow, I'll follow up on a lot of those ideas. Thank you. Um, there's a really, there's a whole ton of different National Historic Preservation Month signs. Mm -hmm. um, oh, nice. That's awesome. That are just, I'm just kind of like one here, one says history lives here. Um, oh, that's good. Which, you know, history lives here. Or, and then it says National Preservation Society, but we would put Hadley Historical Commission mm -hmm. um, or something like that. Celebrate. Then, but, but those are for the lawn signs, but um, it, did, did, you, did you say you did some research on those plaques, historic plaques just, for yeah, homes? Just briefly while we were talking, I, I okay. looked, yeah. Oh, but so, okay. if we said something like that for the lawn signs, would that be more like for people who had historic homes because it's like history lives here or are we just talking about Hadley in general? Cause then we could say like the Hadley historical commission. Like we'd have to put, I think put the name of the town. Otherwise people would be like, is that a historic home? <laughs> if it was like on my lawn, they'd be like, no, that doesn't oh, I, I, you know, <laughs> let's think about where we should be putting them. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a home. And this whole area is historical, right? Right. But then we, we no. should just add the name of the town in it, like the Hadley. Oh, well. yes, yes, yes. So that the wording doesn't sound like it's referring to the house. Right, right. A lot of them put the dates, but it would be better not to put the dates so we could use them year after year. But we could say, if you mean dates, we could say history lives here, like starting in... And then like 1659. Well, yeah. Or even like the date of the f oldest building in town that we have Avery. something like that. Hold on one second. Um, I like the idea of dates, but you know, I just threw out the 1659 date, but technically that's the date of white settlership, but mm -hmm. our history is a lot mm -hmm. longer than that. Okay. So um, I think maybe we just forgo dates. So we don't have yeah. to get into that kind of conversation. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So celebrate or hi historical preservation month or history live celebrate with us. History lives here, the Hadley Historical Commission or something like that, or have history lives here and then underneath it, historical preservation month, like from the Hadley Historical Commission, something like that. I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure the money is right. you know Pretty word large. by word, but we don't want too many words because we want people to be able to read it as they drive by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just want people to know the point of why we're putting them up that it's historical mm -hmm. preservation month, but I don't know mm -hmm. how to get that across without so many words. It's a lot of words. All right. I, I, I can think about us. that a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we could um, 
send around an email or send ideas of what it should say and then try to compile something and we could send out options and people could vote on the options or something like that. Okay. It Did is we next it? week, right? Yeah. May. Yeah. I'm going to do it like tonight <laughs> or maybe we just vote now. <laughs> it says. I don't know. How about I work on something and I'll just send it out for approval. And if somebody has a strong opinion, then we can go from there. But Irene's right. Like next week is May. And we want to get the signs out ASAP. Okay. So we'll vote on the wording. Then Denise will de design the sign. We'll figure out how to get them printed or look into printing them once we have the design. Is that what we should go with? Or should we start looking at how much it costs to print them now? I mean, I think maybe it depends on what the sign's going to say. Then we talk to the company and see how much that design is going to cost. And then we decide how many signs we need. Does that make sense? Or how many we can afford? Sure. Uh I, I would just do it the first way with the uh, sorry the um you, it does it shouldn't matter the pricing shouldn't change too much based on what we say. You think it's just size? Just let's find out how much it's going to cost so we can figure out how we're going to finance it and and in the meantime can you know work on the um the signage and how design. many you can afford? Yeah. And when they can be done by, because ideally, even if it was done, like, let's say the second week of May, we could still put them up for the last yeah. two weeks. If we can get them up in the next, like, two weeks, that would be great. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how long they take to fabricate. Not very long at all. Not long. All right. Probably I wrote down, up. history lives here. Happy Historic Preservation Month from the Hadley Historical Commission. That sounds good. Great. Perfect. So and simple. Perfect. Does it make sense to maybe add a QR code to link people to what? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that too. Because it's we a, don't yeah. have anything ready yet. I don't think because I was thinking we could put like the email address too, but like what do I say when somebody emails me? I could say what we're working on, but like if we had the walking tour, if we had the driving tour ready then I would definitely say yes, but we just, we don't have that yet. Yeah. And I think <laughs> next year, if we are ready, it wouldn't be hard for us to tape a QR code on them. Totally. Mm -hmm. I mean, could we link to our, um, to the Hadley uh, town page, the historical commission there, and that has all our contact information on there. There's nothing really there though to, to f learn more about. Um, I mean, it says who we are and um, who's on the committee, and it has our minutes. I think that people aren't going to stop their cars and get out and take a picture of the QR code. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. That would be my, you know. I think I think if we had the walking tour going and we mm -hmm. did the signs at the same time as the walking tour and we made sure to put them where the walking tour was, then that would definitely be a good idea. So I agree that maybe next year, if we yeah. save, the, save the signs, then we mm -hmm. would make sure to like put a ton of them in that spot if the walking tour is done. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we have a good game plan. We are over an hour. And so I think... Um, in respect to everyone's time, we should wrap it up at this point. Um, do you want me to look? Um, do you want me to look into the pricing? That'd be great. Thank you, Courtney. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next meeting date, uh, we throw out the June 9th time, two to four at Barstow's for our in-person get together, the general discussion, and then. Uh, we mentioned having a meeting at the end of June that would be a regular business meeting. Do we also feel like we need a business meeting at the end of May? I think we've got a lot going on and there are things we ha that came up that we haven't even discussed yet. So Okay, so yes. Yeah, I, I would say yes. Okay. If people have time, yeah, probably. Especially after the select board stuff and the town meeting. Yeah, like, yeah. Touch all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Tuesdays in May, looking at the 21st or the 28th. Pretty confident I'm free both evenings. 21st, I think, is the town election, right? Oh, you're right. Sorry. Yes. Excuse me. Yeah. So 28th is probably better in that regard. 
Yeah, it works I for me. Do the twenty eighth. Yes, to twenty eight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we want to get June on our calendars now too? Mm -hmm. Oh, after the after the in-person meeting, you're saying? Yes, Sorry. where we will actually discuss our business. Um, so that puts us, um, June is a little trickier for me because I'm at a conference the last week, but I think I should be home by seven. It's in Boston, so... Um, if we do it the 25th, I think I will be able to be back in time. I think I can do any of those Tuesdays in June. Okay. June 25th, I, I don't think I'll be back. I'm going to be in New York, and I don't think I'll be back in time for that. Are you available the 18th? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll be back by the 18th as well. All right, then let's say 18th. I won't be here for June 18th and I also won't be here for the May one. I will be in Italy. So. Wow. wow. That's fun. Jealous. Jealous. <laughs> I'd much rather be in Italy. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone. Um, this was a good discussion and I will get on my homework. Hopefully be in touch soon about what I have learned. Okay. Yeah, and then I guess we can just touch base via email about picking up the signs, making the signs, who's going to do what, and then how to hand them out. We can just have like an email thread going. Sure. Great. Sounds good. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good night. Me too. Good night. Bye. Bye.